Now the focus falls on the older brother. Exactly. You know, there is very little known about Vinod Adani. Um, the older brother, and you know, Hindenburg says that uh, he's sort of a, a, one of the figures that potentially helped with the rise of of Adani um, and Gautam and, and, and his younger brother's empire. Um, through our, through the Bloomberg um, research and investigation, um, it was found that um, you know not only um, is he involved to some degree with with a coal mine in Australia that that Adani for. Uh, over a decade had been developing and pushing. Um, he also held uh, until February when when uh, a lot of the um, uproar around Adani came out after the Hindman report, report came out. Uh, until February, he was a director at three companies related um, to the um, coal mine, and he had since then um, resigned. Now, uh, what is known about Vinod? Uh, you know, we have reported previously that he was a uh, director. Um, we also we have reported previously that he uh, has a cabin in a uh, a Donny related office in, in Dubai. Uh, he spends several hours there a day. But beyond that, um, there is little known about him, mm. uh, which is what made this report and and looking into it so interesting. So still about governance, still right. about disclosure. How might this play out? Right. So um, you know th what we've found at least through through this is that through four jurisdictions, uh, money have been changing hands um, for for this. Uh, uh, coal mine uh, in Australia. Um, now, because of the governance laws and what Adani is, is doing, it, it, they say that nothing was done uh, illegally and that everything was disclosed correctly. Um, the only problem is that because of uh, disclosure uh, rules in some of the dis jurisdictions, it's unclear exactly how to follow this money. Uh, it does show that one way it is it is challenging to follow it, and and, and it is hard to to look at it. Now, the uh, Supreme Court has ordered a committee to look at whether uh, things were disclosed correctly re regarding Vinod and, and the wider empire, as well as you know the opposition in in India has been pushing this uh, very closely. But because of how opaque. Uh, the system is, it is very challenging uh, to see exactly how uh, the company uh, could be pinned, could be pinned for anything, but the um the critics do say uh, that this is something that needs to be investigated further, and it is something that, uh, on the other side, that the Adani um, companies say uh, is is not something that should be worried about. Everything is being disclosed, and um, and, and they're following the rules as intended. Stephen, give us a bit of controversy over this sort of Carmichael uh, project in uh, in Australia here. Uh, it, it, what, what's been going on there? You know, I think Carmichael, the, the coal project in Australia, is sort of Adani's overseas crown jewel. This is a project, a pet project of his, uh, for over a decade. It's in this uh, coal basin uh, in Australia that wasn't really developed uh, for a number of reasons. One, um, it, it, it needed a lot of infrastructure to be built between the, the mine itself and a port. There weren't any other coal mines there, and also there were questions about um, the the quality of the coal. Um, because of the ESG push over the last decade, there were very few, uh, there were no lenders essentially that wanted to help with developing this mine. So a lot of folks said, "Well, this is dead. It's not going to happen because if banks are going to provide financing, that's okay." But uh, what happened actually is through these, uh, at least partially, Vinod-related uh, companies had had helped with loans of. And, and debt of one billion dollars uh, through the filings that Bloomberg saw. Um, now this mine is in operation. It started a few years back. Um, it supplies coal to India, which is a major um, uh, producer of electricity or electricity with coal, and it will be providing coal for a, a, a power plant in India that will send electricity to Bangladesh.